ELD with Brainstorm MTG back. This is the finals of Wednesday Night Legacy, uh, filmed on March 21st. Uh, this is preceding our monthly Legacy event. We actually have one tomorrow. And I am on Grixis Delver here, likely to be on Grixis Delver tomorrow if I can do a little bit of tinkering with the sideboard. And Kiefer on Red Stacks. And leading out with Deathrite Shaman. Ancient Tomb into Chalice at 1. And that is a hugely powerful card in this matchup. Shuts off almost the entire deck. You got your Brainstorms, Delver, Deathrite. And Young Pyromancer coming down. So that is promising. Hopefully all of these one drops can still provide some type of value by getting converted into 1-1 one, one tokens. And going to brainstorm during the end step. That does get countered by Chalice. Four damage coming in. Playing Gataxian Probe. And Stifling to get two more counters and we are really in a race situation here if Kiefer can land a creature and equip it will really change the dynamic of the game so at a caverns into walking ballista and that's going to kill the pyroman so four damage at a time going to be three more swings barring some type of ancient tomb damage and Ancient Tomb goes way off to the side. And Magus of the Moon is going to resolve. Interestingly, Kiefer did not tap the Ancient Tomb before passing priority. So that Magus is going to come in. Missing an equip step. That, that's a big, big uh, possible error there. Of course, if he taps the Ancient Tomb and then I Force of Will... The Magus of the Moon, he's in just absolutely horrifically bad shape. And Magus of the Moon picks up that jit, is double blocked by tokens. And Deathrite is out of there. And that means really the only way of getting any other additional threats on board is going to be drawing Young Pyromancer and drawing it fast. And Blood Moon comes down. Going to need Kiefer to whiff for seven turns. That is asking an awful lot. Chalice at two. I mean, that, that does shut off the Pyromancers, but it does not add to his board. And Imperial Recruiter. So that is pretty much just going to lock the game out right there. Imperial Recruiter grabbing another Recruiter. Chalice at one and two uh, means that this game is effectively over. This deck does not run basic, so... Gurmag Angler would be your typical out were you running basics or if you managed to keep a Deathrite Shaman on board. Uh, but this is going to get quickly mopped up by Imperial Recruiter holding on to that JIT. Of course, Imperial Recruiter recently reprinted. Uh, so if you are interested in playing this deck, it is probably the cheapest it's been in quite some time to play it. And lots of recruiting going on. Assembling the squad. And still don't know the name of that one. I'm not convinced it's actually better than Rabble Master, but Keeper has been having some success with it. And Magus of the Moon coming down. An additional Blood Moon effect. And that'll do it for game one. A little glimmer of hope, but the door quickly closed. And the sideboard here, I've uh, got Edicts. I'd love to see Ancient Grudge in the sideboard. I'll definitely be playing that this weekend. Uh, it is something that you can actually flash back with your mana base. Uh, of course, Deathrite Shaman makes it easier to flash back. Uh, but you do run the Tropical, so certainly worthwhile. It does a lot of work 
uh, being able to free yourself from chalices and versus uh, a deck like Kiefer's stacks list here. It also has some other interesting targets, cards like uh, Phyrexian Revoker are possible, uh, as well as Chrome Mox. And of course, those equipment like the Umazawa's Jite. Uh, so definitely a card that I want to want at least two or three of. I'd say two or three is, is almost certainly where I'm going to come down on that card. Uh, and those Cabal Therapies are going to end up in the main deck. Uh, just really not impressed with Stifle and the Singleton Spell Pierce. Cabal Therapy just so strong. Uh, especially uh, when you know your opponent's uh, decks and uh, know your outs. Uh, really with Cabal Therapy, when you're naming blind, it's not so much about uh, guaranteeing to hit a card, uh, but making sure that you're getting rid of outs. Of course, if you're going to be flashing it back immediately, then that is an instance where if you can definitely hit a card, you'll do it even if you don't even care about the card. And that's just because of card advantage being so relevant in the matchups. Uh, Chalice and Thorn of Amethyst. So this is going to be a challenging game here. And Flooded Strand Go. Ancient Tomb, Thorn of Amethyst. Now the question is going to be, do you want to play with Thorn or Chalice on the board for the rest of the game? I think the deck can function with Thorn out. It's not as good. Uh, obviously, it's making all your cantrips really bad, but at least you can still cast them. And this Chalice at 1 is going to draw a Spell Pierce. And hopefully, these creatures are going to be enough to get there. So Deathrite Shaman and Delver. Uh, force a will in hand. Going to be able to brainstorm during the upkeep. And there is... Kiefer does play cards that I don't know the name of them. Uh, it is a 1-3 Trample Double Strike. And whenever it deals damage... Uh, you get to exile the top card of your library, and you may play that card this turn. So I'm sure someone in the uh, comments below can let me know what the name of the card is. Uh, but that is a, a real threat. Uh, brainstorm. Going to have to keep one card in hand. Would have been nice uh, to bolt that guy instead, uh, but it looks like just three in the air. And this is a pretty fast endgame situation now. We've got Delver and an active death right. That's going to be five per turn, and that's going to close this game out in two or three turns, depending on what Keeper's mana base does in terms of damage. He has that thorn on his side. Now it's going to force him to pay extra mana for any of his non-creature spells. And he is able to get Chalice at 1 down, which at this point is likely fine. Uh, and actually going to convert that Daze into an extra 2 damage. Pyromancer coming down, swinging with Delver. And at this point, Kiefer's going to need a lot of blocking. There's Zoetic Cavern. And three in the air. That should do it. Deathrite just going to finish it, as he often does. Going into game three... Being on the draw, Day's not as strong there, but you do need plenty of blue cards. And it looks like some Cabal Therapies coming in. It is a very tough matchup for a deck like Grixis Delver. There are no basics, and almost everything important costs one mana. So Chalice and Blood Moon 
phenomenally positioned for this type of matchup. And here we have a hand that is entirely one drops. Lightning Bolt, Delver, Brainstorms, Ponder. That is an absolutely keepable hand versus everything else in the format. Uh, but without Force of Will, cannot keep it here. Kiefer keeping at seven means he almost certainly has a turn one play uh, that is going to be something spicy, either a Chalice at one or a Blood Moon. Uh, probably the weakest thing he could conceivably keep would be a turn one Thorn of Amethyst. And that other hand only had one mana. And now going to five. In order for this hand to have any type of chance, it's almost certainly going to need Force of Will. The silver lining there is there's certainly a ton of hands uh, that Kiefer could keep, which are essentially glass cannons where they have this one powerful spell, and if it gets forced, then the rest of the hand uh, is either non-existent or not useful. Uh, he could easily keep a turn one chalice uh, with, you know, five or six lands, really. Or perhaps chrome mocks into that chalice. Uh, so there we go. Five keeping with no land. He's got the chalice at one. The scry kept it on top. Gurmag Angler with a couple of bolts. So this is potentially good. Uh, ooh, okay. That's not great. Uh, so Chalice at one still coming down. And it looks like the beatings will begin. Gurmag right now to get the seven mana. We've got some work to do. Going to have to get cards into the graveyard. Five cards. Five cards in total. Three additional cards beyond these fetch lands. Uh, which is doable, uh, but it's going to take some extra turns, and it looks like Magus of the Moon coming down now. Magus of the Moon basically removing almost all the outs here. This game is essentially over. Chalice at one. Going to make it really tough. Pyromancer coming down. Now those lightning bolts could have generated some extra 1-1 one, one tokens. But against this board state, really not going to do enough. And Jeet, one of the only cards that really could have been relevant on our side of the board, has come down for Kiefer. Meaning that this one's getting more and more out of hand. And could this be a lethal strike right here? So he's getting counters. Nearly lethal. And easily lethal the next turn. Could have pushed through an extra five damage there. With counters, true name is drawn for turn, and that is it. Uh, so Keeper's deck doing exactly what he has designed it to do. Uh, shutting out all of my viable lines there. Chalice and Blood Moon uh, really making it so I couldn't play any of my cards, uh, which is the name of the game uh, for the, the Stacks deck. So that is the end of this week. Uh, hopefully, if you guys are seeing these videos, uh, and you live in New England, I'll be seeing you at Scholars. We've got an event this weekend. Uh, that is March 24th. It starts at noon, and that's at 244 Liberty Street in Brockton. And we will be broadcasting live on Twitch, as well as doing uh, these videos on YouTube later. This has been ELD with Brainstorm MTG. Thanks for watching.